Hello, everybody. Welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello, Scott Telford. Josh, a friend, a little bit of something different, not necessarily a news video, but something that's an all-out recommendation. We might do more of these going forward, depending on which games we just need to shout about in a given moment. And I'm going to kick this off with Pray for the Gods, something that was announced way back in 2015 that I think a lot of people will recognize. It's something that is very much Shadow of the Colossus. There was the whole thing with the team. Uh, they're called Nomad Studios. We're getting out there just saying, we absolutely really love Shadow of the Colossus, and there's not been a one in a while, so I think we're going to put one together. Um, and then it took them, like I said, it was six, seven years, it came out in the uh, the very tail end of 2021, um, and it very much is a Shadow of the Colossus chasing game. However, the thing that I love about it, and I played this in pretty much one sitting, um, is that I feel like there's just enough to it. And the thing that it made me realize is that Shadow of the Colossus overall feels like a genre that never got tapped into. It feels that like you could absolutely do multiple games with a big open world, various huge uh, bosses that require traversal and sort of like platforming mentalities to take down. And once you get in that gameplay loop, it's really super enjoyable. It's why people really love the original Shadow of the Colossus and I feel like that's one of the things that Pray for the Gods really capitalizes on um, and there's a lot more to it as well overall one of the reasons that I well many reasons that I love it quite a lot um, but to throw it over to you very quickly what, what did you know about Pray of the Gods did you see it when it first got announced or what's your thoughts on the the Colossus genre as I'm now calling Scott it? Scott Telford every single day since I've gone back to work you have <laughs> talked at me and said that Pray for the Gods is one of the best games you played last year. Like, should have been talked yeah. about. You wish you um, played it. it so you could come in and be in the Game of the Year discussion. And every single time you mentioned it, I've been too afraid to ask what it is. So I've not heard <laughs> about this at all. I didn't know anything I... about it. I only know that you love it. And practically, I'm using this, this video as an excuse uh. to pretend I'm sat at the pub with you. And I just want yes. you to tell me why I need to play it. I want to finally <laughs> understand, after all of these references, what about mm. it that is so good. Like you mentioned there, you know, obviously, it's very much in inspired by Shadow of the Colossus, which is a game that just obviously so many people love. But when you mentioned there about it being an untapped genre, like what do you mean mm. by that necessarily? And how does this capitalize on it? Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing I said. It. It's kind of like it does come down to the way that the open world is laid out, the way the bosses are laid out, the, the way that you take them down, the fact that, you know, it does mean that you're figuring out different weak spots on these giant creatures and then literally surmounting them in 3D space. I feel like that very rarely gets done. Like, yeah, we'll take on a giant God of War boss or a Dark Souls boss or something, but it's largely the same combat model that you're using to take it down. It's very rare that platforming is the way that you take something down. I feel like that's what makes Shadow of the Colossus such a big deal. Um, and in this case, um, you know, they have a lot of um, crossover with Breath of the Wild. A, you can climb anything. It has the whole uh, Breath of the Wild style climb anything. You know, you have a stamina mm -hmm. gauge. You can just point the character at something and surmount whatever it is. Um, and the way that they blur, like I said, they have the Shadow of the Colossus template. So you have this idea of you're resetting back to a certain point. You're being told to take down a certain number of over-the-top giant creatures in the land. Um, and, but when you're on the way there, you have a nicely detailed crafting system and a, and a, a cooking system and stamina meters and survival stuff, uh, like warmth and food and things to keep on top of that way. There's a whole bunch of different difficulty options where you can make Make it a really grueling survival game if you want, um, with like really huge knee knee high snow and just trying to get from one point to the next, getting enough potions, getting enough uh, bits of equipment so you can finally take down the next hulking. And they're not called colossi in this, but they're, yeah, yeah, they're pretty much the colossi. Um, and I think that gives it a nice edge. And um, the fact that they have uh, different enemies in between, um, you know, the, the starting points and the bosses themselves, basic stuff, but things that weren't in Shadow of the Colossus. Like for me, one of the issues with Shadow was that you were just doing the same thing over and over again. Really set, run out, go to the boss, take it down, flash back to the starting point and do it again. I think it was 13 times in total. Um, and that game was gorgeous. It looks absolutely beautiful and it definitely set a precedent. But I feel like you could do so much more with open spaces. Like I said, a platforming approach to combat uh, and fleshing out the world itself, what you're doing in between. So that you kind of have that set structure you have that idea of you know when i get to the boss i'm banking everything i've done so far and then i reset again almost like a roguelike style approach um i feel like there's more that they could do with that i feel like the the like i said the colossus genre could absolutely have been a thing and you kind of realize when you go into this just how much it reminds you of shadow of the colossus um but in a way that makes you realize you know there are all these other elements that they could have plugged in uh, yeah. and this game even has um, you know i mentioned souls before this game even has other mini bosses uh, in between the giant creatures that you're taking down um you know there's there's like a set of three other creatures that you can find and fight 
And I will say that the um, the combat in this, um, there's, there's straight, you know, melee combat. You can fight with, like, uh, blades, you can pick up torches, you can set things on fire. Um, that's the most rote part of it. But it, it's satisfying mm. enough. I thought it was serviceable and satisfying enough. That's definitely not why you're coming to the game. But it does add something uh, when you're in between, uh, you know, going to the next creature that you're going to take down. Um, but one of the things that I really love as well is that they flesh out the lore side of it. And um, they open with this whole thing about, um, you know, the, the state of the world and the fact that the world is frozen over and all the resources are gone. And, you know, in times of great trouble, man has put their hope in this ancient tale of this one island that seems to hold the key to reset everything and that's where all these explorers have been going over and over again and so when you get there you find all these slain bodies and all these notes left behind from different people different diary mm. entries and um, saying that oh we've been lied to and this isn't what's actually happening on the island um, and there seems to be something at the heart of the island but we don't know what it is and all these different creatures are here um, and then you start reading all these it's very well written you find, start finding all these other diary entries of people who have got up against the creatures and it's almost like Gulliver's Travels they're describing like you know there was 50 of us and one of them and we tried pinning it down but it broke free and oh my god and everything else and I just think that adds all these elements add so much to the like I said the Shadow of the Colossus template that fleshes it out in a way that I really really loved um, and it was also hilarious I've said all this and then I looked at the review <laughs> after I played it and loved it I saw IGN give it 4 out of 10 so I was like well I, I'm right. clearly in the completely different camp so I love it I think it's genuinely incredible because of all those things and I have a few more things to talk about but what do you think of all that? Well, I, I know why you love it. You know, you mentioned there, yeah. you know, you, you're on an island, you're searching for some kind of thing at the heart of the uh, heart of the island. Is this mm -hmm. game just lost? Is this game just the TV show <laughs> lost? Because I know how much you are a fan of that. Is that why it is so good? There's sadly not a man in a hatch, nor is there 48, 15, 16, 23, 42 etched anywhere. But yeah, it might be. It might be that. I just think that they, they nail a hook and a reason to take these um, creatures down in a way that, um, the like I said, Shadow didn't. And one of the things that um, you know underpins the narrative side of it is like, every time you kill something, you reset back to this tomb. But if you find, if you um, explore the tomb a little bit, you'll find a underground set of graves. There's like a set of three graves that belong to these sort of ancient mystical witches. And they start hmm. talking to you um trying to explain like why you're taking stuff down and you should do it for them and, and even though you are there to try and help the rest of humanity um there's that side of it where you can argue that even that is being taken from shadow of the Colossus if you know where that story is going to go but i feel like they do um, a nice amount of setting the table let's say with that stuff in a way that shadow you know the way that it builds up to its twist it hits you because it comes out of nowhere they flesh things out in a different way here and um, that i still think works and um, to mention another um negative while i'm all talking about the end game without specific spoilers is that I do feel like they almost ran out of budget towards the end, the very end of the game. Right. Um, the very, very, very final um, boss gauntlet, let's say, um, has a completely different art style, has a well, has a completely different um, art direction for that particular thing, and uh, is the weakest part of the game in terms of the visuals. What you're doing is still solid, um, but it just, it's just flagging that. I think overall it's still a very recommendable game, but the very end of it was the bit where I was like, oh, you, you might have run out of time here, even though it's been six years, you might have just kind of kicked this <laughs> out. Um, but one other thing to throw in uh, on the mechanical side is that, you know, when you're in this open world, you do have a big, sa you have a sailcloth, which is the thing, obviously, uh, yeah. Zelda's always had, or had in a few mm -hmm. different games, came back in Breath of the Wild, big deal, which alongside the climbing system, just encourages you to climb up stuff, leap off, sail somewhere, look at something that looks interesting, and fly over to that, see what it is, get some crafting components, get a better weapon, fight off some different enemies, then take down the boss. It just makes for a bunch of really nice little gameplay loops that I think work so much better. It's like, it's better, or it is very much the sum of its parts and I think that's what makes yeah. it so recommendable um so yeah I just I mean I had an absolute blast with it and I think it's kind of it's weird how little I mean they obviously chose to release it uh towards the very tail end of the year but it came out right at the very end after everybody had declared their games of the year and stuff or at least recorded them in our case mm -hmm. and I feel like it's just been completely overlooked so if you like Shadow of the Colossus um and you like the idea of someone approaching that as a genre template um I think they smash it I'm not going to put words in your mouth, Scott Taylor, but the way you've been Do describing it. this in comparison to Shadow of the Colossus, it almost mm. sounds like you're saying this is a little bit better. And I don't want to I... cause yeah. any kind of havoc in the comments below if that's not what you mean. But, Well, I think this. I've thought this. <laughs> I said this to myself out loud. I definitely enjoyed it more than Shadow of the Colossus. I know that right. obviously Shadow is a big acclaimed game and I love what Shadow is going for, but my problem with Shadow was that it felt too repetitive. It was that it just yeah. felt like I was doing the same thing over and over again and there wasn't enough boss variety. There wasn't enough variety in the takedown methods of how you defeated those creatures. Um, you know, for example, in Shadow of the Colossus, um, the very last one is like a big totem style creature that fires projectiles at you. One of them is like a smaller dog creature that you've got to dodge and then get on top of it and weaken it that way, make it fall down a cliff 
with and you can you can then you can stab it in its belly and stuff um but a lot of them were just you know big lumbering creatures swinging at you jump on the hair ride it up stab it do whatever and for me i just didn't think there was enough to it whereas here um you've got one that you've got to wade into some deep snow so that it stumbles you've got one where you've got to use a turret to shoot specific spots to weaken different parts of its armor and um, to free up different animations that you can then ride back up to its head to um i was gonna say stab it but in this game you you ring bells to do damage um <laughs> but they little things like that well like i said it's if you if you flatten out shadow of the colossus as a, a genre template what were you doing what were the gameplay loops what can we add stuff into um i think it elevates the project or the product overall um and like i said you can literally point at the things they're taking from it's like well that's from breath of the yeah. wild that's from shadow of the colossus but they knit them together with so many enjoyable mechanics in between like i said the crafting stuff the lore and um, how well it's written um that i do think there's a, a heart and a soul here there's a team very much going we love these games that's why we're bringing these elements in um and i do think that it elevates overall um so yes let us know what you think down in the comments below i know like five people have played this game including myself and the sour review scores haven't helped but i think it's brilliant hence why i'm <laughs> shouting at josh brown on a video so let us know what you think <laughs> down in the comments below of shadow of the classes and if you picked up pray for the gods for now though i've been scott from moreculture.com i mean josh from moreculture.com I will catch you next time. Also, shout out any other recommendations for games and maybe we'll feature them going forward. Bye. Do it. Bye.